It's like a scene from a movie. On an icy day in early January, a clergyman pauses in front of a house. He looks weak. He should be. He's had quite a journey. He is Redemptorist John Newman, fourth Bishop of Philadelphia, the first not of Irish descent. And his life is marked by travel and toil through service and compassion. Perhaps in this movie, he remembers a 20-year-old desiring to be a priest, obtaining his own passage from Europe, looking for a bishop to ordain him, mastering Italian, Spanish, English, French, and Gaelic, besides speaking his native German and Bohemian. Newman's early priesthood was hard and lonely, working with poor farming immigrants near Buffalo and Niagara Falls in New York State. Eventually, he found companionship among members of a religious order that had just arrived to minister to Germans, the Redemptorists. He professed his vows and five years later, owing to his evident leadership ability, became the order's first superior in America, visiting houses from Pittsburgh to Detroit to Baltimore. His skills at governing and organizing were likewise detected by the Vatican, which soon made him a reluctant but gifted bishop at 41 years of age. The traveling didn't stop. In his eight years as bishop, while organizing the finances of an immense diocese and structuring the modern Catholic school system in the States, he set up 40 hours in every parish, founded an order of nuns, and began or finished building more than 80 churches. That's one a month during his episcopate. How could he have traveled and built and organized so much in such a short amount of time? One of the choices a new bishop makes is the motto on his coat of arms. The young prelate selected, Passion of Christ, strengthen me. I think this can give us an insight into his spirituality and an inspiration for ours. Contrary to Hollywood, Jesus' passion has less to do with the love of pain than with the pain of love. What strengthened John Newman was taking a journey deep into the Paschal mystery, the example of a Redeemer who emptied himself for the people he loved, even when that meant a bloody death. The passion of Christ is reenacted whenever a busy mother finds time for her bored child, when a businessman says no to an affair, when a student realizes going to Mass is really for me. Jesus' passion is present when ethics is a partner in decision-making, when justice is not vindictive but restorative, whenever color or race or orientation do not provoke prejudice but invite appreciation. This passion can strengthen us when we understand that Jesus' love breaks the bonds of sin, urges a return back to God and the sacraments, and permits grace to flow freely in the darkness that had been serious addiction or simple distraction. Yes, Jesus' passion can strengthen, but how real it is when passion becomes compassion. And so when this compassionate bishop collapses at the doorstep on Vine Street in Philadelphia, it's no wonder. He's not quite 50, and yet his tiresome journey is over. Before a priest arrives to anoint St. John Newman, he's passed over. His final journey into the embrace of Christ. His passion is complete. May we be inspired to love God the way he did. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.